Hello, hello! Welcome back to episode 3 of A Link to the Past. I hope you guys enjoyed that intro music. That was the chorus to our new single, Home Sweet Home, by After the Comp. We're going to be releasing a music video for that single this Friday, May 1st. So I thought it would be cool to plug it in, show you guys what it sounded like. Uh, you might have already heard it on our channel, but now you've heard it here! Uh, with that being said, let's dive into episode 3. So. To recap off episode 2, we basically plundered all of Kakarika Village. Technically, we are going to be coming back for a little bit more, but we don't have all the proper gear to be getting everything that we need. We pretty much got it all for what we can get right now. That being said, we are on our way to the first temple, and we stopped here, right outside the temple, in a Great Fairy's Fountain. Uh, as a quick side note, every time you boot up your file again, it asks you if you want to start at your house or the sanctuary. So, I did start at my house and just run over here. Um, there's no way to start at this fountain, but I want to make sure we pick up where we left off, so... That being said, let's dive in! Alright, so again, episode 3 now. We are uh, on our way to temple number 1. And uh, I kind of skip little conversations between people, only in the sense that I didn't talk to the grandson to find the grandpa, because I know where he's at! He's right here. Uh, I always had a problem pronouncing this name as a child, so Sahasrala, Sahasrala, I guess that's what we're rolling with. Uh, he's a descendant of one of these seven wise men who, uh, apparently there were seven of them that had sealed Ganon way back in the day, prior to all the events going on right now. And uh, the wizard is basically trying to kidnap all the maidens, including Zelda, to break that seal. Uh, this is one of the final descendants of those seven wise men. Of course he's going to help me. He wants to make sure his ancestor's seal stays intact. So I'm going to do everything I can to take his advice. Uh, he runs through the, the Master Sword, basically tells me that there are three pendants that I need. The first of which, the Pendant of Courage, is from the East Palace. Uh, I completely forgot that's what the name was, but Temple Number One, East Palace. Alright, now that conversation's over, we are going to blow up this wall because this isn't a secret, guys. This one. Boom! Alright, wall's blown up. We restored all the bombs we just may or may not have not had. 50 rupees. Solid. 50 rupees. Alright, we just stacked 100. I'm not sure if that was his or maybe it was just part of the building he's now stashed in. I'd like to imagine it's his, but... Uh, okay, so these little statues, they, uh, they only move when you get close, and then they just continue to hop you. So, my advice, haul ass. Uh, and I know that there are some dead ends around here, so... Uh, I think I'm gonna go this way. Yeah, we are going this way. Um, it's crazy that I remember this stuff. You know, just direct path not to take and not to take. And I don't think that there's any, like, treasure chests, or treasure chests or anything else in this area that I'd be missing. Uh, I'm pretty sure right now the plan is to gun for Eastern Palace. Alright, now that we are in here, you guys are going to get a taste of what it's like to puzzle solve in Zelda. Don't take that first left turn. I just wanted to show you guys not to do that. What you should have done is hit that button and come across here, slash these guys, get some rupees or bombs or whatever they're dropping. Uh, you'll notice a little tile on the ground. Make sure you push that button, get into that door. This is fun. Hop down here and basically just gotta dodge the big bullet, which I didn't even see it. There it is. As long as you zigzag through there, you're good. Just get in before that bomb blows up. Uh, so again, I'm doing this off memory. Uh, I know some rooms I'm probably not even going to go into. Um, but there's nothing wrong with that, right? I think I might have to kill these guys. We're going to for the sake of restoring magic, if anything. And... Number three! And... Number... Four! 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 Number four. Right, I guess you didn't have to kill them. Alright, this is one of the first rooms that is basically timed. You have to just wait it out. I think. Oh no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is timed. Ah, I just wasted all those pots. That would have been great. 
What did I tell you guys? Pots, they're way stronger than this little stick. Rip Uncle Ben. I guess we're gonna roll with Uncle Ben. I don't think he got a name, so he's getting Uncle Ben. And just like that, we're moving on to the next room. I think I want to say Compass, maybe not. Ah, compass. I was right. Should have gone with the Instinct. Uh, you don't really need that, but you do need to go this way, so it's like, why not? Uh, I think these are little messages from Sahasrallah. He gives you a hint. Um, you don't need the hint. If you're gonna watch this, you're golden. Uh, yeah, you can kill them with pots, but you cannot kill them with any other weapon. Except for the weapon inside that chest. Which we will get to. Patience. Um, I think I want to make a quick pit stop to episode 3 and I still cannot get the start button. Uh, no, we're still good on fairies. Um, but you know what, I'm going to show you anyways because secret galore. Pop down. If you hadn't seen in here, there's a little fairy fountain inside the tunnel. Or I mean the temple. Which is great because there are only a few fairy fountains in the game between both the light world and the dark world. So it's nice to have the occasional temple have its own set of fairies. Also, I don't think I've really highlighted it, but the boomerang is a lot better than I let off. Um, usually it stuns enemies and it's just as good as the magic rod. It doesn't use any magic. And also you can collect things with it. So uh, yeah, I really should use the boomerang more. Convenience. However, come on, it's awesome freezing people. I know I don't have any magic right now. Uh, a little bit of magic, but... Alright, now we're in a dark room. Uh, haul ass over here, push the button, jump in. I think it's another... Okay, look at that, look at that. Memory serves. Don't even need to worry about the other pots. Go in there, grab your key. Oh. Keep running. Open the door. I need to stop with this whole face scratching thing. Alright, we are running across to an area which you couldn't get unless you went the way that I took. Uh, this room is very annoying. Uh, I'll show you guys why. Uh, I think this is the first encounter that you... Uh, see one of the little yellow... Ah! There are these little yellow, like, power lights that basically turn you into a rabbit. And make you obsolete for a little bit. I don't know if they're even in here. I might be just talking on my ass. Um, okay, no, it wasn't that. It was just a matter of those things breaking up. Which isn't the worst, but those actually are pretty dangerous when they hit you. Not only do they take health, they take magic. And I don't really want to get hit because we don't have a lot of magic. Uh, here we go. Uh, pro skills. By the way, I know I just got the big key, is that what they're calling it in this game? Uh, big key, and now we can open this awesome chest to one of my favorite weapons in the game. The bow and arrow. Well, the bow. I guess I've already had arrows. I have 30 arrows, which is a good amount of arrows. Stop pushing the map button! Alright, arrows. Boom. Boom. Oh, to be honest, I didn't even know that did that. I didn't know that it made them crumble like that. Um, but these guys I can now kill without needing a pot. And we are through the big key door, which means pretty much from here you're going to be progressing to the, the boss pretty quickly. Once you get into that door, you're typically through the final area of the dungeon temple. I don't know. One of the two. Um, whoa, I got hit. Damn, it took me three pots on that one. Alright, here we go. Get his attention, and... Okay. Boom. Alright, you took the damage, but uh, I can get that back. Uh, which one is it? I want to get this on the first one. Ah, I'm wrong. Third one. 
Alright, uh, crazy room, top to left, uh, hit it, and get the heck out of here. No reason to stop and stare. Uh, let's see, die. Die. Oh, gosh. Alright, if you notice he's red, he's gonna take two arrows before you have to kill him. But if you do it back to back, you can kill him before he closes his eye. Also, if you haven't caught on, you can't do any damage to them while their eyes are closed. You have to get close enough. Uh, I want to see if a pot can still kill in one hit. Oh my god, the pot doesn't even do damage. Okay, these guys are something else. You need arrows. I've got plenty of them, but you need them. Alright guys, I think this is the boss. I think. Boss time! Right, let's see how long this takes us. One. I mean, it was the first temple. Bosses get exceptionally more and more difficult. Uh, but we got the courage of, or the pendant of courage, and uh, we're gonna go take it to Sahasrala. Two pendants remaining, guys. We did it. I don't know how long we've been going now, but we did it. We beat the first temple. You know what? We're not gonna stop here though, because there's a little bit more that we can do. Uh, I'm gonna keep this episode going. Might be a little bit longer than episode one and two, but. Hey, we're enjoying ourselves. We're having a good time. We're learning things through this game. Uh, now we are about to get another one of my favorite items. Literally every item is my favorite. Alright, so he's telling a story. I'm typically skipping through this. I'm sorry, guys. Um, if you really want to dig into the, the lore, I would recommend looking into the entire Zelda timeline. Um, suffice to say, there are three pendants that I need to collect in order to pull the Master Sword. And the Master Sword is going to be essentially the sacred weapon that we're going to use to make sure we can whoop people's ass. And Sahasrala has given me Pegasus Boots. So I don't know if this was... No, this wasn't the first game that... It might have been. I don't know. This might have been the first game that introduced Pegasus Boots, but essentially now what I can do is just continuously dash like so. Bada bing bada boom! You can hit things, you can bounce off, you do damage. Um, it's going to help us in that building that I, I mentioned in the last episode where you need to get through a maze in 15 seconds. Uh, yeah, it helps out with a lot. Surprisingly, it doesn't help you get down steps any faster. Though. Um, let me think, where can we go right now that we've got the boots? I know for sure the game wants me to go pick up a book. Uh, it's in the little library right around the corner, and you need this book in order to get into the second temple. Um, I'm not even sure if the game tells you you need the book. I'm pretty sure you get to the second temple. You realize you can't get into the second temple because you can't read the scripture that's blocking the second temple. But, just like every other Zelda game, the more you explore, the more you see things that stick out, and eventually, when you make your way into this house, you'll notice a book just sitting on top of the... Top of the shelf. Very high. Uh, you can't reach it, and there's no way you can jump in this game, so the only thing you are able to do is ram your face into it. Like so. Boom. And now we've got... what are they calling it? The Book of Mudora. Honestly, probably my least favorite item in the game. If I were to, like, make a... like a... one of those charts where you rank all the items, this would be near F be down there. I mean, it's used a few times in the game, but they ain't no Pegasus boots. Alright, let me think. We are gonna go knock out this uh, 15 second trial that I've been talking about. First and foremost, these asshole brothers are fighting with each other, and uh, one of them builds a wall between the other, and uh, 
Yeah, he's quarreling with his younger brother. He sealed the door. Okay, a little jerk. So I'm gonna come in here. I'm literally gonna put dynamite into his own house and blow half the wall up. And I'm gonna come in here, and I'm gonna talk to this guy. Is he still angry? Did you make him mad? I don't know what they fought about. I just know that they made construction in the middle of their house. Anyways, moving on, we are back to the challenge. I think you might be able to come back and do this a second time once the bushes are destroyed, but we're gonna try this for the first time. If I can't get this, shame on me. If I can, yeah! Alright. Um, oh god! She started. We're probably not gonna get this. Uh, ooh, ooh. She's like 15 seconds in, go! Okay, I probably should use the D-pad too. I'm going the wrong way. Does he got it? Does he got it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. 14 seconds I qualified. I wasn't even ready. But we got it. Uh, I think if you were to have gauntlets, which I'm going to get in a bit, you would have been able to pick up this rock and get a little shortcut. Uh, I forgot. But I still got it without having to try. Is she saying anything to me? Nah, uh, she won't talk to me now that I've beaten her contest. Took her family heirloom. Um, shoot. Let me think, guys. What would I want to do with the Pegasus boots? Uh, oh, I know. We're gonna go back to Kakarika Village, and, uh, you know, kind of a shame that I didn't highlight him in the first episode, or I guess second episode, but there is a guy who runs from you, and you can't catch him unless you have the boots, and you can't catch him running that way. So, what you want to do is catch him from this side, and uh, I don't even know if he even does anything for you, honestly. I can't believe you caught me. With your speed, you, mu you must have been easy to kidnap, Zelda. You don't look like such a bad guy, though. Anyway, because you have such quick feet, it might be a good idea to run and bash into many things. For example, trees in this village may have many useful things hanging in their branches. Well, should give it a try. Uh, I guess I didn't really need to, to get him, and it's probably why I forgot to even highlight him. Nothing important. Uh, gives you some tips to run into trees, which I was right. In the last episode, you can get things from trees. You just run into them. Um, but yeah, I think this is a good place to stop. We've already completed the first temple. Next episode, we are going into the temple number two. Probably going to fly through it just as quick. The first three temples are pretty easy. They want to get you acclimated to puzzle solving, but uh, yeah, I feel like we're going to blast through these three, and then we are going to get to the really more difficult part of the game. Things take a turn, and uh, I'd say the difficulty gets ramped up, but thank you guys for making it this far. I have a lot of fun making these videos. I've been having a lot of fun hearing your guys' feedback. I love that you guys are excited about secrets, and those of you that haven't played the game, it's fun showing you guys what this is like. Um, again, thank you guys. If you haven't subscribed already, please give me a subscription. I think we've been doing great. Like I said, we're over 40, and... We've not even been doing this for a full week, so thank you guys so much. Uh, with that, I think I'm just going to wrap it up. And, adios!